We have just passed Saxonburg Boulevard at mile 14 of the Green Belt clockwise as we continue here on Hearts Run Road a little bit further till where we will turn left on the Dorseyville Road. But anyway, let's try listening to the radio a little bit here. Maybe we can talk later on. I think I'll call the political firestorm. Uh, what were you talking about the uh, John McCain um, uh, funeral ceremony? But I don't know how much you were able to see of that. Uh, um, I, I saw quite a bit of it. And then, you know, the great thing about modern technology is you can miss something and certainly replay it. I play, replay the eulogies of President Bush as well as President Obama. I enjoyed both of them. I thought um, that Meghan McCain's remarks were, um, I, I think her remarks will stand the test of time. They were, they, I thought they were extraordinary. Um, I, I followed her a little bit, you know, because she's become somewhat of a celebrity and obviously her father was <laughs> and the substance of her remarks were really, really moving and beautiful. You were, you were cutting out a little bit. You're talking about Meghan McCain. Right. She just, her remarks were just really beautiful. Um, and I think her, her speech will stand the test of time. I, I would, I would recommend everybody just to read her speech. You know, the watching her deliver it was, was difficult because she, she was daughter and her dad. Um, but it, it was a beautiful, beautiful speech. Now, I enjoyed the part where Barack Obama said, how about that John McCain getting the last laugh by making George, meaning President Bush, and I get up here and say nice things about him at the end of the funeral. It was very funny. It was it was quintessential Barack Obama. But what I really loved is when the camera panned to George Bush and he did that. He, you know the thing that Saturday Night Live always teases him about that. Right. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I, I think that the national coverage was again aimed at pointing out the differences between the manner in which people have devoted their lives um, to the democracy and, and how you can have differences and still at the end of the day say we're all Americans um, with the current holder of the White House. I think the five days of coverage was five days of coverage in part, not in whole, but in part because there's such a marked difference in our democracy. And finally, in the last 30 seconds that I have, uh, did you think that when President Bush was doing that <laughs> thing, and he was really sort of trying to nuzzle Michelle Obama? I think he's got a crush on Michelle Obama, and I think he was trying to cozy her up through there. I can't prove it. It could be fake news. Um, I'm very pleased with the manner in which George Bush has treated uh, Barack Obama. Um, George, his father. Uh, was extraordinarily um, kind to the Clintons who beat him and, and deprived him of the second term. And all of that is extremely good for the rule of law, so the passing of one um, power center to the next. No, the the rule of law. All right, thank you so much, Heather Heidelbaugh. We appreciate your time today. Thanks, John. News Radio 1020, KDK. Triple A traffic on the five, powered by Bowser Nissan Route 51 South on top of the hill. Here's Scott Stiller. And Charlie Containing State Police tell me they do have an accident on the northbound side of 20. This is between the Toronto Heights and the Millerstown Interchange. It's uh, basically right around the Saxonburg Boulevard overpass. There's only one vehicle involved. It's off on the shoulder. They're waiting on a tow. So it's causing some minor delays in that area. Otherwise, things are rolling along fairly well. A little slow on the inbound side of the parkway east from Edgewood, Swissville to the tunnels. Corporate approach still looks pretty good. No problems on the parkway west, parkway north or 20. This is KDKA Traffic and Weather Together brought to you by the Meadow Casino. The payouts keep getting bigger and bigger at Western Pennsylvania's premier casino. Just this year, the Meadows has paid out over $92 million. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Our next report at 425 from the Presbyterian Senior Care Network Traffic Center. I'm Scott Stiller on News Radio 1020 KDKA. Thanks, Scott, for the remainder of the Liberty Afternoon. Hot, humid clouds, highs in the low 90s. Partly cloudy, warm tonight. Patchy fog, late low 70s. Tomorrow on Wednesday, patchy morning fog, otherwise hot and sticky. Sunshine, both highs 90 on both days. Thursday cooling down to 86, Friday cooling down to 79. Right now, a hot and sticky 91 degrees. Uh, 
the wider Wellness Center Sports Desk. Here is Jeff Hathorn. It's the first week of the season. Still no Le'Veon Bell. The Steelers tail back a no-show for the first practice. Center Marquise Pouncey asked if this impacts the team. It does in a row. I promise you it doesn't. The team's so locked in and focused on what we got to do at hand this weekend. And if we ever comes, we'll, we'll open, we'll, um, open arms and hopefully it's safe and ready to run the football. Cam Hayward. We want to win every game. We want to win a Super Bowl. And uh, if you're going for the ride, you're going for the ride. But uh, until we get here, uh, I'll worry about the guys in the locker room. Ramon Foster said, who's number 26? We're rolling with who's here. As for potentially starting the year with James Conner as the starting tailback. I'm looking forward to him. He's in great shape. He's a guy that understands the offense. He's still young, but he's fast. He's agile. He's a guy that we can count on. Foster practice full. Could start against the Browns. Josh Dobbs will be the backup quarterback. Saying Landry Jones contacted him five minutes after he found out he made the team, and Landry didn't. He called me at like 3:47, and congratulations, uh, best of luck if you ever need anything. So I'm the stand-up guy, so I was really thankful to have that relationship with him during my time here, and moving forward as well. Hayward, Pouncey, Ben Roethlisberger, and Chris Boswell named captains this year. No down playing from Pitt, as Pat Narduzzi said of playing Penn State. And it's an important game Saturday. You can walk the streets or you're going to walk the alley and get to the game. You know, you got to sneak out of Heinz Field and walk down where there's nobody, you don't have to see anybody. Or you're going to walk out with your chest up and your chin up and, and, and walk right down the middle of everybody and say, hey, here we are. Let's go. So to me, that's what it, that, it means a lot. I like John after a comedy show. Adam Frazier and Gregory Polanco drove in the runs. Pirates beat the Reds 5-1. Trevor Williams, the victory. PGA Tour playoffs. Bryson DeChambeau leads at 16 under. Tony Finau and Rory McIlroy minus 12. Dustin Johnson 11. So is Bubba Watson. Phil Mickelson shot a 63. 10 under. Brooks Kepka and Jordan Spieth minus 9. Tiger Woods dropped to minus 7. Jeff Hathorn is Radio 1020 KDKA Sports. Well, now the sports news about the Steelers is interesting, as it usually always is. But I want to interrupt the radio right now to talk to you a little bit more. Earlier, I mentioned about the issue of an express bypass or beltway. And I also mentioned how, well, we kind of have a western bypass now, I-79. And a northern bypass, that's I-76, the Pennsylvania Turnpike. A southern bypass that's well under construction in part. And an eastern bypass that's only been planned and is only on the drawing boards. And we talked earlier also about how the difficulties of building such an expressway looping all the way around Pittsburgh. But right now I want to mention about some of the shortcomings that the current system has. Now I-79 makes a very nice bypass around the western edge of Allegheny County and it's also toll free. The nice thing about I-79 is that it does connect with various spokes that will take you from I-79 into downtown Pittsburgh, such as the Parkway West, I-376, Pennsylvania State Route 60, and of course, 79 connects with Pennsylvania 51 and Pennsylvania 65, Ohio River Boulevard. Now, a problem with the I-79 is that it's really not just a bypass of the city, it's a bypass of the entire county. What I mean to say is that its connection with the Southern Beltway, if that's ever finished, will be right actually at the Allegheny County, Washington County line south of Bridgeville. Likewise, its connection with the Pennsylvania Turnpike, which as I noted is kind of like a Northern bypass around the city. Well, that connection is way up at the Allegheny Butler County line near Cranberry. Simply speaking, I-79 is longer and also in many places further away from the city than you would prefer a bypass to normally be. It's important to remember still that these spider web entanglement of belts around Pittsburgh were not intended to be an expressway. Not like I-495, the capital beltway around D.C., or I-695, the Baltimore beltway. Columbus, Ohio has a beltway. Cincinnati, Ohio has a very long beltway that goes into three different states. 
they're all interstate highway systems and this was not intended to be that merely these are a collection of secondary roads yet in some places there should be two alternative routes just like we have route 19 and truck route 19 we should have a green belt local loop here and a green belt express loop not to say that that would be an expressway but it would be a quick loop maybe we call it the green belt quick loop which would use Route 8 to the Allegheny Valley from the North Hills. FICO has to be at least 660. The app is free to download and it makes money the same way banks do by charging for loans, but as I said, they just charge less. Customers get the benefits of having credit cards, but now don't have to worry about late fees, charges, or penalties. The Tally Credit Line sounds good, but the app is only available in 16 states right now. It does hope to be nationwide by the end of this year. I'm Chuck Kamlick, CNBC. 422, let's check in with Joe Castillo with news headlines. Well, let's not. We could just go to the KK, KDKA television newsroom and find out what they're going to do coming up at 5 o'clock tonight. Uh, and who would be with us from the KDK television newsroom? One of their fine broadcasters, to be sure. I'm John McIntyre, filling in for Robert Mangino. I'm well, now let's get to the issue of the Pennsylvania Turnpike I-76 and how it could figure into an express bypass around Pittsburgh. Here a similar problem exists as it did with I-79 that this is just too long of a bypass and too far from the city. I mean, the turnpike connects with I-79 near Cranberry Township at the western end of the county, and then connects with the parkway east in Monrova, way over at the eastern end of the county, and thus it is really a bypass of the entire county and not just the inner city. In addition to that, though, the Pennsylvania turnpike does not have enough exits in Allegheny County to really serve the function of a bypass too well or a beltway too well. Really, there probably needs to be two or three exits added to the turnpike in Allegheny County to allow it to serve as a good functioning bypass to the north of the city and the region. Here the Green Belt clockwise does run on an express route, Route 28 southbound, or Route 28 inbound. But just briefly until it connects to the Highland Park Bridge, where it's going to join the Blue Belt clockwise in crossing the Highland Park Bridge over the Allegheny River. We'll see that just up ahead. Sign says green belt keep left. The right lane will take us into downtown Pittsburgh, which we might even be able to see up ahead. We'll take a peek up ahead. But the left lane takes us across the Highland Park Bridge on the along with the clockwise blue belt. No 
it does not look like we can see downtown Pittsburgh from here on the Highland Park Bridge on ramp. We're obviously a little bit too far up the river from downtown.